Today we're taking a look at the Light Phone, but this time around the Android edition. Now, the Light Phone is based on Android, but this time around we're going to be using the full version of Android, and I'll be showing you step by step how to do it. So, let us begin. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jose, and here we talk about digital minimalism. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to subscribe. A couple of things I wanna get out of the way. First things first, this is thanks to three users on Reddit, user Ceneval, RallyCA, and also DTingly. Dylan, the last one, made a specific video where I was able to follow step-by-step step and unlock the full Android compatibility on my Light Phone 2. Now, this is also nothing new. The Light Phone is based on a layer of Android and then the Light Team made a specific operating system or an app that acts like an operating system. It pretty much replaces everything on the Light Phone and it has extra customizations that they're able to sync with the dashboard and everything else. If you want to read about that, make sure to go to the link in the description below. There is a post by the Light Phone team or the development company that works with the Light Phone team about how they built the OS or the application based on React Native. I think it's a very good read and allows you to understand a couple of extra things. One of the things that I was able to find out as well on the Light Phone 2 is that there is some security patches that are coming up very soon. So the last one was based on last year's 2019, I think in October, that's when it was uh, shipped with, of course, the security layer, but there's of course going to be updates for that, which is, you know, based on the Android operating system or the Android project, the AOSP project. And of course, we'll see that in the future. Now, with that said, I want to showcase how it works. So after you follow the step-by-step -step from Dylan, you go, you access the Android layer, the bootloader and everything else. He has a pretty nice video. One thing that I will say is that every time that you access the Android layer, you have to go back to developer options and hit the service menu. If you don't do that, you will not have access to the keyboard and a couple of the extra things that make the Android layer work flawlessly. So make sure to access the service menu every time that you access the Android layer. You can switch back and forth, which is nice after you have followed the video. You can go to the Light OS and activate it as your main mode. I have this mode right now back, but if I wanna go back, I just connect it to my computer, load up Visor, and do the process all over again to access the full Android layer. Once you have the Android layer, it works like any Android device. A couple of things though. One thing is that the font is really small. Even though you are able to have and access all of the different applications, the font is super tiny. So if you thought that the font was decent on the regular light OS, the font on the full Android compatibility is very tiny. When you're typing and when you're doing a couple of other things, you'll be able to find out that the font is very small. You're able to change this if you want to tinker more, but it may change also the performance of the phone. The phone performed very well. It was very smooth, but it has a lot of screen refreshes depending on the application. I loaded up Hulu just for fun to see if it works, and it does work, but there's a lot of screen refreshes to the point that I was a little bit concerned that I was going to cause some damage to the screen. Of course, if you're watching videos, if you're doing something highly intensive on this phone, it will cause damage to the e-ink screen because e-ink screens are not forever. They may be better for your eyes and for your health, but they don't last forever. So I was able to load Tidal, Hulu, WhatsApp, different applications, authenticate, just like any other e-ink Android device. But I, what I found is that it was just a completely different experience. Just because the light phone and the form factor is small, it felt a little bit more digital minimalist. Also, it doesn't have Google Play services, so I didn't feel the need you know, to kind of like delete everything because of privacy issues, so that was nice. It's just a very basic Android device based on the AOSP project with Android 8.1 and you're able to install pretty much anything that you want. I thought that was a nice touch from the Light Phone team, and of course, this is not something that they recommend, but it's something that you can access if you want and you want to tinker a little bit more. Uh, I think that it was a good experience, and I definitely will be talking about it in my one-year review of the Light Phone 2. It was interesting to just see and be able to use the GPS or all of the applications that I'm used to on Android, but as I used it more and more over the weekend, I just tested for a weekend, I found that I don't miss that anymore. As I have been using the Light Phone 2 and the Light OS as intended by the Light Phone team, I found myself to just enjoy the couple of features that I have and be excited about the features and how they're going to be make it work in the future. I think that this 
special Android getting into the full operating system is for people who are satisfied with the iPhone 2, but they wish that they had a couple of extra capabilities or they're just waiting for the maps and they just want to use it right away, they don't want to wait. But the flip side on that is that you're still able to install the other applications. You can install Twitter, Discord, Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you want. You will have access to those, you know, on your e-ink Android, but the experience is it's okay, it's not that great. If I were to go that way, if I just wanted an e-ink Android, I will get something that is meant for that, right? Like the Hisense A5 or maybe other e-ink screen device like the Yoda phone or something like that, right? Those are a little bit discontinued, the Yoda phone especially, but the Hisense is available. And I would say that that's a better alternative if you're trying to use your light phone too as an e-ink device. I personally want to use the Lightphone 2 for what was intended. And for me, what was intended is just, you know, use it with the Light OS. Um, I like that I'm able to switch back and forth. And I think for some people that will be a good ability, you know, you have your computer, you load it up, you switch back and forth, and you're able to use a couple of extra applications for a moment or so, and then you go back to Lido, uh, Light OS. So um, kind of my final thoughts when it comes to this. I think that the phone is, great as it is. Of course, I've been using it for the past year and I'll be giving my review very soon. But if you want to access it, there is a video from Dylan. Make sure to hit the service menu every time that you access the Android layer and then you'll be able to kind of check it out. See if it's for you and you want to buy the light phone as an e-ink device. I personally like the Light OS. I think tools and just that form factor and that software experience is better. But if you want to access the full Android layer, now there's a way to do it. So let me know in the comments what you will be doing. Are you staying with LightOS or you will be trying out, testing out for a couple of days, the full Android experience? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one and happy holidays.